I wanted to turn to the latest that's happening in Venezuela and with U.S.-Venezuelan um, relations. Venezuela has announced the arrest of an unspecified number of Americans on charges of espionage, at least some of whom have reportedly been released and left the country. Speaking at a rally, the Venezuelan president, Nicolas Maduro, said the suspects were trying to stoke anti-government political sentiment. We've detected activity, and we have captured some U.S. citizens in undercover activities, in hidden activities, espionage, trying to win over people in towns along the Venezuelan coast, trying to win over people in some neighborhoods. In Tachira, we captured a pilot of a U.S. plane of Latin origin with all sorts of documentation. President Maduro also announced new restrictions on the number of U.S. diplomats allowed in Venezuela and rule changes that will subject Americans to the same visa requirements Venezuelans face in the United States. Uh, President Maduro has also unveiled a list of American politicians barred from entering Venezuela in response to U.S. sanctions against Venezuelan officials last year. Maduro has repeatedly accused right-wing opponents of fomenting a coup with U.S. support. Now, the White House has denied the charge but said last week it's considering tools to, quote, steer the Venezuelan government in the direction they should be headed, unquote. Professor Noam Chomsky, your response. What's happening? Well, one kind of question we should immediately ask ourselves is brought up by your observation that uh, uh, Venezuela is uh, planning to impose on U.S. citizens uh, the same restrictions that the United States imposes on Venezuela. Why do we impose those restrictions? Uh, suppose, say, that uh, Iran uh, was sending uh, people to the United States to foment uh, opposition to the government and a call for change in the regime. Uh, how would we react to that? Um, unimaginable. But we consider it our right to do that elsewhere. Incidentally, that is not, this is not a justification of Venezuelan actions. Uh, the fact that we do it doesn't make it justified. Uh, if uh, others do it, no, it's not justified. Uh, Venezuela has severe internal problems. There's no doubt about that. What is your assessment of Maduro and how he compares to President Chavez? Well, Maduro, uh, Chavez had uh, a, a charisma and popular support, uh, an appeal that Maduro doesn't have. Uh, but there is a har uh, there are difficult uh, economic circumstances to face within Venezuela. Uh, the uh, uh, the economy is in difficult shape. The, uh, during the Chavez years, there were progress in many areas, but there was no success in moving Venezuela away from a strictly oil-based economy. There was very little in the way of <laughs> diversification of the economy, the development of agriculture, development of industry, and so on. And that's a pretty weak read for an economy to rest on. Uh, it's not a successful development program, and that's now showing up. There were uh, um, there are, um, inflation problems. There's, they were never able to deal with the problem of internal violence. It's a, not the most violent country in the hemisphere, but it's pretty bad. And uh, these are serious internal problems. They're undoubtedly being exacerbated to some extent by U.S. involvement. Uh, uh, by rights, we should be trying to support Venezuela to overcome its internal problems, not trying to light fires that will make them worse. How could the U.S. do that? Uh, we could, for example, eliminate those restrictions that you're talking about. We could be uh, providing uh, uh, economic and uh, technical assistance that could be used to uh, uh, overcome internal difficulties. Um, these are things that could be done. Instead, what we're doing is uh, uh, maintaining a position of extreme hostility. This is not to, there's plenty of problems internally, and our actions are purposely making them worse. It's not by accident. We want, the U.S. government wants to make them worse because it wants the regime overthrown. Now, Chavez's own estimate, whether it's accurate or not, I can't judge, but what he's, uh, his position is that, uh, that uh, the United States was willing to tolerate his government up to the point when he began to play a significant role in OPEC. 
and convinced the OPEC countries, the oil-producing countries, to uh, lower production in order to raise prices. And the U.S. Uh, was strongly opposed to that, and what he says is that's when the U.S. government turned against him and backed the U.S. backed openly backed the 2002 coup, which saw, which briefly overthrew the government uh, and uh, continued uh, subversive activities. That's his judgment. MIT professor Noam Chomsky. Coming up, he talks about Edward Snowden, drone warfare, the legacy of slavery in the United States, and Noam's new love. All that and more coming up.